Hi, this is Joshua Morris. I'm the Homestead Ranger. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install this Mirafont Geothermal Livestock Water. It's a pretty neat setup, especially if you're off grid, because you don't have to waste any water in the winter time to keep your tank thawed out. A lot of livestock waters will have a little leak valve, which is supposed to be left on when it's very cold outside. That way your water pipes don't freeze. This one has a geothermal tube, which I'm gonna show you how to install, that goes four feet down in the ground. And that geothermal heat is actually where your pipe is located and your float valve has enough heat so that we've had this thing down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit and it has never frozen up on us. Everyone paying attention? Wait, who's that in the back? What are y'all waiting for? You can see it's pretty deep down in that hole. Simply the, the geothermal tube in there and then there's the pipe. I don't know if you can see, but there's actually a little bit of condensation on the bottom of that pipe because it's so cool down in the bottom um, that the air actually is condensing. And that constant temperature is what's gonna keep things from freezing. Um, just a rule of thumb, how deep should it be? They say about two feet below the frost depth. This pipe is about four feet uh, deep, so that's gonna keep this thing from freezing. And then <clears throat> once you get the concrete pour, as long as you have the geothermal pipe centered, the uh, water will fit right over it and you can do all the plumbing later on. So, you know, for example, you and me, if somebody brought us water, we might be like, hey, thanks for the water, and we'll drink that water. But if you're dealing with goats, like we have goats, and you bring them some water, and they're like, hey, I'm gonna get up and take a crap in the water. Um, so it's a good idea to have a bar to discourage them from jumping up. So the idea is the goat tries to jump up, they take a dump, and it'll hit the pipe and fall off, or it won't be very comfortable to sit up there and crap in the water. Um, basically, I just took the shovel and I got some extra gravel as well. Uh, it's a good idea to fill in the area around the geothermal tube with a little bit of gravel. That way, uh, whenever you do have rain or there is a water leak, or for whatever reason you need water to drain away, it'll drain through that gravel. Okay. Then we built a form. Um, the water, this water, is a three foot by two foot water. They come in different sizes, depending on how many holes you have. This one has two, it's fairly small. And so I made a pad that's four by four. Um, I just put that form on there, staked it down there with concrete stakes. Um, and so the pipe is gonna be, I set it so it'll be 18 inches above the water. So it's not very comfortable for an animal to sit up there, but it's still big enough for a large cow or even a big bull to get their head underneath the 18 inch space and get some water. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and weld this cross member. Okay, here we are, we've now poured the concrete. The instructions require you to have a 12 inch pipe that's uh, insulated. that comes down from uh, at least two feet below the frost line up to your uh, waterer, in this case, I've installed a 16 inch pipe and then I put a 12 inch concrete form tube inside of the 16 inch pipe and then I filled the space in between those two pipes with some uh, big gap filler, great stuff, um, gap insulator. So this is right, what this the geothermal well uh, tube looks like. You can see that I've put in, I've installed the black pipe down to a depth of about four feet, which is over two feet below our local frost line. And then I've placed a cardboard concrete form tube inside of that. You have to make sure it's suspended evenly. And then you can fill up the gap with the great stuff, a big gap filler. And that's gonna create a nice insulated space. You can okay, so right now I've put the body of the water and the tank on the slab and I've used compression bolts and the brackets that come with it to attach that to the slab. The next part is really very simple. All you do is you put the ball in here and of course it has water in it now but you can also do it empty. You put the two balls inside. Next you're going to put the water cover on right here. After the water cover you're going to assemble the float valve and I'll show you how that's done. And then finally you put the float valve cover on and that's really all there is to it. The best... It's very lightweight. It's just insulated plastic. So you can just slide this over. It slides right in. Then you have six bolts 
that are pointed, all right, or screws, all right, with hex heads on them, 3 8 inch. Okay, so I showed you earlier how this works, and you have your geothermal tube underneath. Then you have your one inch pipe. I like to use the black poly pipe, the HDPE. And you simply cut that two inches below the top of the water cover. And then you have this 90 degree elbow right here. Just insert the float valve into that elbow. You're gonna turn until it becomes tight. That's kind of awkward when it stops right there, but I think I can force it through. Hopefully it won't break. You never know. All right, that's pretty tight. All right, that's just hand tight, but it's very tight. Then I'm gonna take the little arm, all right, and you screw the arm into this float right here. Go ahead and screw it all the way in as far as it'll go. What you're going to do is this float is going to go almost straight down, slightly angled back towards me. So right now I have the float attached to the float valve. I've got the wing nut tightened and I've got it adjusted. And the water is actually pushing up on the float and that shuts it off. Now, when the cattle drink, it's going to push the float down and it'll fill up with water right there. You can see the water's coming out, the cattle drink. Once the water gets low again, it's going to float. It's going to shut itself off. One of the things about these waters that is different is that your livestock will have to learn how to use them. So the blue ball is here for a reason. This is to keep the cold weather out and it'll also keep debris out when it's not cold outside. So, when the animal is, learns what to do, they'll push down on this ball and then they can drink as much as they want. The water, when it gets low, the balls will actually sink and there'll be a little bit of an air gap. So that's why it's important to have the float valve adjusted properly. When it's adjusted properly, the force of the water will hold the ball up to the rim. You'll get a good seal. You won't have any cold air get in there and freeze anything. And you'll be surprised how well that works. So we've adjusted our float properly. The balls are in place, everything's full. Then we just put the float valve cover back on. And there's two nice bolts with washers. You simply put them back in their slots. And that's how it's done. That's how the Mirafont Geothermal water is installed. There are a lot of other brands that are installed just like this one. But we really like it, especially for off-grid applications or in a situation where maybe you have a tank at the top of a hill and you have a limited amount of water. And so in the wintertime, you can't afford to leave the valve on. In that case, you'll want a geothermal water just like that. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you want to know a lot more about tips and tricks of living off-grid and building the ultimate survival homestead, don't forget to check out my book. It's Thrive in the Coming Dark Age, How to Build the Ultimate Survival Homestead. I'm Joshua Morris. Homestead Ranger. Thank you for watching.